Are we ready? There we go. Well, now it says on air. Good morning, Slotheads. We're doing take two, as we typically do here on our show. And uh, I don't think our first intro even went live. So <laughs> now everybody can hear me. This is what we do um, <laughs> almost every week. So the new starting time is just going to be 8.05 Central Time because we always do that. I always do it every single time. I press live on one and not on the other. And yeah, so here we go. Uh, this week, we've got Raul with us. So um, this is hilarious because I just said all of these things about five minutes ago and none of you could hear us. So um, thanks for joining us. Thanks, as usual, for dealing with technical difficulties. Hopefully, we don't have as many as we had last week. But uh, we were basically just saying hi to everyone in the chat. Liam, thanks, as always, for being first in the chat, ready to roll, waking up early with us. Garth, thanks for joining us this morning. Jen, Jen is upstairs uh, listening to Joe, making sure we're, we're going and uh, definitely telling us that uh, it's not working and you guys are not live. So thanks for that. Um, and then Doug's with us. Uh, Slot Journal is with us. Mark, good morning, sir. And Patrick Lang is with us. Yeah. Fast Laps himself. Thanks for joining us, man. Um, awesome. But uh, yeah, it's a good good group of, uh, of folks this morning, um, and we're just super excited to have Roe on. So as we typically do, it's been two weeks since we had the last show. So, um, Joe, what have what have you been up to the last week? Anything good? Uh, Anything well, last I mean, weekend? well, nothing nothing special last weekend, really. I mean, I just hung out with some guys, you know, from Toronto, and uh, for some reason. They, he just wanted to follow me. You know, we had such a great time last weekend. If you guys haven't uh, seen it, for those of you um, new, I went to Toronto. I met up with uh, Raul, who's here <clears throat> on our screen, and uh, Massimo from MP Slot Car. They took me around. My first introduction. Say that, to Massimo, Long. again. I think you need to say that again. Massimo? Massimo. <laughs> Don't, yeah, dude, yeah. you give me shivers when you say that name, Massimo. Oh, Massimo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And now we got Raul here, man. I was having a really great week. Picked up a few cars. Can't wait to show you guys that on the screen. And um, that's it. Really had a good time and got me a got me a nice Iron Dames Ferrari here that I get to tune up. And I broke in the motor last night. And now I just got to put some oil on this and just make sure everything's running well. And that's what I'm working on, really. Oh, I was really tempted to get that one. I saw it lot two weekends ago when I was up in Milwaukee. Very tempted for that one. But. If I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something about this this car. I'm I'm a little uh, disappointed. I knew how it was gonna run. I'm not about the run, but the actual uh, color scheme. It's it's a flat fuchsia, I guess. I don't know what it's called. It's color. Uh, it looks really nice in this in this light right now because it looks like it's glowing. But in real life, I, I think I would have preferred the flat of the um, the Alpha Arturi. The Arturi, yes, sorry, Alpha Arturi. Alpha Tauri. Alpha Tauri, thank you. I'm like, still need coffee. <laughs> that flat blue looks so good. Huh. I'm not saying this doesn't look good, but it's it's not my favorite. I'm I'm a little disappointed in how they, the pink is not as, but it's cool. I mean, it looks great on the track, but that's just, that's that's the only thing I can take away from this car is that I'm not crazy about that color, even though in this light, it looks really awesome. But And that's it. Tune it Very up. cool. Tune how about it. you, Raul? I know you were a little sick, but you had a pretty sweet conversation on Thursday with uh, with uh, Mr. Slotted himself. Mr. Ferrari. Yeah, Maurizio. yeah, we had a good chat with Maurizio. That was all Pete. Pete uh, stepped up, uh, did a lot this week. I was not well, and uh, I couldn't pull my weight for shenanigans, and Pete took over. So that's the cool thing about doing a show together with someone. You can lean on each other and get through it. And uh, that was really on show this week. 
And uh, yeah, uh, it really meant a lot that Pete stepped up, uh, got Ma Mauricio on. Um, we, we've we been trying to do the digital system, understanding Carrera, understanding Skelectric. And uh, one thing I don't understand is Oxygen, uh, which is the big commercial digital track system that everyone uses. And uh, so we got uh, the developer and the inventor and whatever you want to call him uh, to actually come and tell us a little bit about it. Um, yeah, so it was great. It was a great conversation. First time I've ever met Maurizio. So it was kind of awkward in the, in the back end, uh, because, you know, uh, he doesn't know me, he knows Pete. So when I logged on, it was just me and him and we were silent for a couple, like well, at least a good <laughs> 50 minutes just silence. Cause, uh, he didn't know what to say to me. I didn't know what to say to him. And then he came on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's normal. I remember the same thing happened when I got Dave Kennedy on my show for the first time or any of the big guys, uh, you know, uh, you, you don't know what to say. And, uh, yeah, so I, I totally understand that, that whole concept. Um, I get, I get it. Italians fluster you. You're, you have a hard time, you know, in the presence of greatness. I get it. I get it, dude. I, you know, it, it takes, it takes, um, <clears throat> a bit of, you know, a bit of practice to, talk with us now i said this in my intro that nobody listened to but uh i forgot my cowbell this morning i will be ringing it and sending these two to their corner if they get too heated so if you want me to send them to the corner and ring the cowbell just let me know in the comments if it's getting a little too heated um <laughs> but yeah just want to let you know i'm your moderator today i should sh i'll do my best to, to handle it but i don't know with the well, with the oxygen hold down when he's rolled down his Italian flag, we can continue here um, with what I was saying. Uh, you, you, you good now? You put that away? Got it out of your system? No, but go ahead. I'm just, I'm just warming up. Just warming up. It's, yeah. it's so, fun. like I was saying about the oxygen system, before I was very rudely interrupted by an Italian. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, um, yeah, so it, it, it's a very interesting system. It's independent of everything. So it's independent of track. It's independent of pretty much everything. It's it's a direct controller to car system, right? And yeah, that blew um, my mind. Yeah. And it's almost, I, I totally get it. I understand totally what he did with it because it's a remote control car. Basically, he's turned your slot car into a remote control car. Yeah. That um, that gets drive through the through the through the controller, but the controller can also allow it to do things by signaling to it. So now you understand why twenty cars can run on the system because it's not they're not sharing the packet of information with several other cars on track. It's coming directly to the car. So each controller controls its own car. So totally understand it. Coming from an RC world, it makes a lot of sense. How it integrates with the Carrera system and the Skelectric system and all that, that is still unsure because there are some, I've watched some videos, especially with Carrera, because you can actually install the oxygen system on a Carrera track. Right. Uh, and you can trick the Carrera controller. You have to have it like a, 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 a secondary Carrera controller. You, you depress the lane change switch and then hook the, and it will hook into the SCP controller. It's really weird, but there's a lot of videos online, and you can actually use the oxygen system on your Carrera track with the Carrera lane changes and everything. So very interesting system, um, unique. I think they need to do a lot more with the documentation and communication about it because yeah. it's a very vague. Um, and I still don't understand why you have to go buy a dongle separate and then buy the software. It's, I mean, if the dongle is so cheap, and you're already putting together like manufacturing. Why don't you just package the whole thing together? Put it so, in a box. I love, yeah, like that's the <laughs> only part that I just didn't understand. I was like, this is why is it all piecemeal? Like, why can't you just bring it all together and say, here you go, this is what you need for your basic level getting started oxygen system? You know, like, yeah. uh, so that's the only part that confuses me. Um, and, and it's really confusing because if you go to like Pendle or you go to any of these like electric greens and stuff and you look at oxygen, you just type in oxygen, um, it's like all the parts come up. And if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Awesome. Um, 
it was a cool yeah, conversation and it definitely like because i've seen oxygen used like uh when i've watched some live streams of like the the 24-hour le mans uh slot car race um yeah so I, i've like seen it in action but i had no idea how it worked like that's you know not much of that was talked about um but hearing him explain like that it's basically an rc car on rails and instead of a battery the power's coming through the rails i mean that was just like oh yeah now it makes sense like it's just it's funny it's just like a little bit of a light bulb went on and then it sounds like everything gets controlled through the computer through that dongle too which is kind of cool so it's all going to one place so that that leaves yeah. a lot to like you know expansion on um on like race management software and a lot of things can happen with that as opposed to like you know the controller talking to the control unit on carrera and then the control unit talking to the software and like going back and forth is a little um it yeah. works right right it does the trick but it's not uh it's not the same you know possibility it does the trick on a on a sm on a smaller scale right. right but when you start to introduce like 20 30 you know 20 cars uh it doesn't work because yeah. like he was saying it was very like what he was saying in the beginning was imagine that you're sending the signal for the lane change and the power all through one rail and it's small packets of information that keeps on going and if you had six cars it's a lot of draw on the power Even more information right? yeah that's true and and there's that you know i don't know if you know chaos theory but every every signal gets gets some lot of chaos in it yeah. as it travels through 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 this kind of space so um understanding that now you have a direct connection control the two car it just takes all that away, right? And you get that really smooth operation. And then the really cool part about the controller that I thought was really cool was the directional arrows on it. Because it really makes you think even more about how you want to lane change. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I picked that up when I looked at the controller. I saw the I saw, arrows. I didn't know what they yeah. were for. So it's actually direct, directional changing if you needed to. So you could actually... Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Like, so you could have a switch like, that would go left or right, and you could press that's which. That's right. Whoa. So that's what I'm thinking, because there's yeah. no other reason to have directional arrows, right? That's true, yeah. So, um, yeah, because you're it's talking sounds... about the slotted, the slotted controller, right? That orange controller. SCP-3. The... SCP-3. Yeah, because I was looking at that, and I was disappointed when I read all what it can do. Uh, and then it wasn't for Carrera. It was specifically for, um, well, Carrera. I mean, digital was specifically for analog. Because you can set it to have your handbrake, right? So, like, for example, that would have worked perfectly on my track where I kind of want my brakes light to go around the corners. But when I need to go into the pit, I really need as heavy braking as possible. So you could set what they call a handbrake and you press the button. And the next time you hit the, the brakes, it would know to go to 100%. And then it would stop. And then it would go back to your normal setting. So I'm like, that's like every time you want to pit, you just, I would think of it as the pit button. So those up and down buttons were, I guess they're programmable. And now he can reprogram them to be left and right, which I thought was really cool because those buttons that were there before. And that was what it's for. It's kind of like a, 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 you can either have it a one-time use where you press it once and the and the car acts like a handbrake, like 100% uh, brake. Or you can press it to be like, okay, the next time I hit the brakes, please act like a handbrake. Go to, go to 100% braking power. And I was like, this is amazing. It brings so much like, you know, so you can actually come into a pit and not have like not roll out of your pit, pit stop, which I was doing last night. I was testing the uh, the other system, so that anyway, that's my two cents on that. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> well, I mean, like that's just basically yeah, yeah. conversation in a nutshell. No, yeah. it was awesome. No, I, I think it's pretty cool. I think, especially for commercial tracks, would be uh, it's good to see. Um, but I had asked him, right? Like, when is he ever going to package that? Do you think he's ever going to package it into a nice, you know, a nice clean box? That would help. No, so for now us. you have to ask yourself the question, right? Like, unless uh, unless oxygen becomes more and more prevalent, like the only reason I would think about installing an oxygen system on my track or at home or putting it together would be if I was a, I was racing regular at a club. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, for at home, six cars even on a on a one thirty second Carrera track. Is too much traffic. For the, um, yeah. the max. On any size track, you I, I can just, fit at home, right? Any yeah. any size. 
it, it, that's right. a lot of cars. Uh, in general, we don't have big tracks at home. Like when you look at the 24 hour Le Mans track, those things are gargantuan. They're the size <laughs> of a gym. A gymnasium, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's a full gym. So 20 cars running a track is not so bad because you got so much track. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, uh, but when you put it into a home context, I mean, majority of us, we're lucky if we have 16 feet. Majority of us stay within 12 feet long, you know, and maybe let's just say on a good day, we have eight feet wide, right? So yeah. the majority of us keep into these tracks and six cars on track. And if you want to add ghost cars, you can to take it above that eight, whatever. It's more than enough. So does the oxygen system really have a place at home? Only if I was racing. If I was yeah. continuously racing at a club event which had oxygen and was digital, I would install the oxygen system in my house so I could tune my cars to my controller. Yeah. And practice and yeah. Yeah. That That's the sense. only thing that I would see, right? Um yeah, so that's my two cents on it. It's a very robust system, but it is commercial. And it's even, like, everything about it, even the interfacing. I mean, you, you've seen Smart Race. It's very slick. Yeah. It's very consumer-focused, right? Like, Smart Race mm -hmm. is very consumer-based. It's, yeah. it's pretty. It's got the bells and whistles. <laughs> uh, it looks like an F1 screen, you know, like when you watch the F1s go around and it gives you all sector times and everything like that. That's cool. But when you look at the oxygen system, it looks like a commercial system. Like, like when you go to Ernie's, I mean, uh, Joe was at Ernie's, and you could see their big green boxes and names and times. You know, it's like very commercial, and yeah. that's really what the oxygen system looks like. So, yeah. And that's you know that's that's what people ex expect when you go to commercial track. You expect that just bare bones, just give me the information I need. And so, yeah, I I totally understand that, and that. That actually, so Patrick in the chat, fast laps. I've been I've been testing some of that and going back and forth with him, and his is like uh, I'm super excited about it because it's like sort of best of both worlds. It looks really pretty and really clean, and like the the voice announcers and the the race screen are really nice. But on the back end, on the race director side, it's like. Um, it, it's super robust. There's like a bunch of things you can change and, and do all kinds of cool stuff. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's just such a funny balance between trying to, trying to appeal to us as home racers and, and, you know, in our basements or, or spare rooms and we want it to look nice and pretty and, and be fancy and give us announcements. And then you go to a commercial track and it's like, just give me the data and work as long yeah. as it does those two things. It's good. But, uh, yeah. What color am I? And go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly very cool very cool that was a great conversation i was i was very excited to hear it um i'm glad that that the other pete from across the pond could step up and help you out you know that's just what pete's do <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what pete's do because I, like, uh, <laughs> I don't do any yeah, work on this side you notice this about the pete you know they like early morning shows both of them <laughs> <laughs> right because uh, that's what Pete's do, I guess. And then uh, step up a lot. So, Touché. which is Touché. great. We need to call um, everyone in the slot. We need to have more Pete's in the slot car world. <laughs> more Pete's. Less Joe's, more Pete's. Oh, ding, 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 ding. There's the bell. There's the bell. Go to your corners. Easy, Joe. Easy. I can see you revving up. I can see you revving you up. You need more people like me, okay? Here we go. You need more people like me. You know why? Because I come in. And I'll dabble into the whole world, but I'm I'm still a Carrera fanboy from the get go. And this is why you and I are like really good friends. This is why all three of us are really good friends, is because we love Carrera. We love what it has to offer. And look behind you. And I, you know, those of us coming in can only dream of having the collection that you have, Mr. Raul. And especially when I pick up a car and I'm like, oh, this is the sickest car ever. He's like, yeah, that's a Mini Z. That's not even a slot car. I'm like, oh, I hate my life. I love everything. Everything I touch <laughs> turns to gold. You know, it's just too expensive. But uh, you need guys like me because we got to show the new the, the new guys coming in that it is attainable and you can't have fun with smaller tracks or basic kits and just with minimal, minimal upgrades, right? Oh, uh, talking about um, Mini Zs for a second there. What are you yeah. doing? Anyway, talking about Mini Z. So Nico, when I meet with Nico in the UK, 
Uh, I don't know if you know this, but in, in Germany, they take the Mini Z bodies and put slot slot car um, chassis on them. Oh, man. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to be discussing that with Nico on one of the live streams. And uh, we're going to talk about how to do Mini Z conversions. And it's, uh, it's, it's a, you know, Mini Z bodies are really, really, really beautiful. Yeah. They're um, gorgeous. Uh, yeah. Yep, I got one. Um, can't say enough about how far the RC world came from when I used to race Lexan bodies uh, to what it is today. You know, um, when I saw a Mini Z for the first time and I hadn't been in the RC world for a while, I was like blown away. So that's why I have so many of them. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, I gotta get me some of these. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so like, uh, yeah, they race them in Germany a lot. So I'm very interested oh, to cool. figure that out. Yeah. Is it going to be there at the show? You think there'll be mini Z's at the at the slot car show? Oh no 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 no! Eh? I don't think so. Uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, okay. You know, um, I can't tell you much about UK slot car fest at all because I don't really know too much about the show. Um, Except that you're going. Yeah, man. And it's like slot car so... mecca. You're making a pilgrimage to the. How did you convince Massimo to go? That's what I want to know. You and your master. Let's talk about why <laughs> I decided to go in the first place. So before we get to your boy about Massimo, so the reason why I decided to go is that I, I understand like um, if you really want to get into a hobby, I always believe that um, it's good to go to where hobbyists gather, right? And we used to do this a lot in wargaming, obviously playing tournaments. Uh, we traveled to Adepticon, we traveled to Las Vegas. I've traveled around the world to major events in wargaming. And every time you go there, every time you feel like you're stuck in the hobby or you feel like you're not going in with the hobby, I like to go through these things because you come back invigorated or you come yeah. back with an idea and you have knowledge transfer and you get to you get to feel the excitement of this hobby through other people's eyes. And we can do that through YouTube, but it's not the same as r rubbing shoulders with these people. In the flesh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. and, and, and then seeing seeing what they see, right? Uh, so I, I was always curious about what a big hobby, what a big slot car show would look like. Uh, and that is the reason why I decided to go to UK Slot Car Fest. It, will it be an annual event? Maybe. Because uh, I used to do that with wargaming for many years i went every year all to the same event you know because that's how that's how wargaming is built it's like everyone's very dedicated to the hobby and we all appear at all the events and eventually you get to know everyone it's like yeah. you walk in and it's like home it's a home away from home everyone knows each other you're not hiding in the, in the basement playing with your hobby you hear your old <laughs> one you're like everyone knows me i'm accepted yeah, uh, I, yeah, it's it's you get around other yeah. people who like the same nerdy things you like, then you're like, oh, this is normal. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole. It's like it's. Uh, I remember when I went to Adepticon for Wargaming, oh, uh, cool. which is the biggest show in North America. Yeah. Is Adepticon? Oh, well, no, second largest. And uh, I remember that week at Adepticon was like bliss, because you could just be the, your nerdy self, and everyone yeah. accepted you. You're like, hey. Yeah. I fit in. <laughs> Whoop de do. Well, there's right. always uh, there's always somebody at something like that, or you slot car show. There's always somebody that's a little bit crazier than you are. So it's like, yeah, yeah. no, this is great. <laughs> like this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it it uh, what does it do? It it validates your existence. I guess, yeah, right. <laughs> it's like no, it's cool. I'm 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 one of the normal guys. You know, yeah. My wife yeah, thinks I'm exactly. absolutely nuts, but but yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it's normal. I mean, there's there's thousands of people here. I must fit in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just one of thousands here instead of just me lonely troll in my basement. <laughs> yeah, so um, so yeah, so that's how I decided to go to UK Slot Car Fest. Obviously, um, uh, becoming really good friends with Pete. Uh, yeah, so the first videos I ever watched when I came to YouTube was actually Slot Car Raising. I don't know if you know him. Gary out of the UK. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen and uh, he yeah. was my he's my hero he's still my hero and i'm actually dying to meet him when i go to uk and then the second person that i watched was pete that's before i even watched travis or even watched mp so 
Uh, mm-hmm. These were the first two guys. And I remember, uh, you know, I've said this many times, but it's still a very valid memory for me. I remember watching Pete and, and I always said to myself, I wonder if I could ever, if he would ever say my name on his show, <laughs> you know, and uh, to be, to actually be this close to Pete and really have a relationship where we talk every day and, uh, you know, part of his inner circle, it, it's, a, it's, it's like, yeah, it's like one of those dreams come true kind of thing, you know? Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of spearheaded the move to go to UK uh, and, and meet with them. That was definitely a big part of it as well. And then how does Massimo come involved in this? So, I don't know. Last year, I tried to organize a trip with Massimo to go down to the States to meet Marty and the boys in Ohio. And uh, Massimo kind of fizzled on me. Uh, so, I ended up pulling the plug on the whole trip. Um, and this time, I was like, I'm not stopping from Massimo. So, I booked my flight to the UK. I booked everything. And uh, I was talking to Massimo, and I was like, and I said, I'm going to the UK. He's like, what? I said, I'm going to Stockholm Fest. And he's like, why didn't you tell me? I was like, well, I didn't know. I said, last time, you didn't. You weren't too, you know, you weren't too committed last time, so. You know, Massimo, I'm sure, had a good reason not to go. You know, Massimo's busy. He's a big oh, family guy. Oh, come on. <laughs> Massimo fanboy, number one fan right here on the show, no, guys. Hopefully You're meeting him live. Say, oh, you know, you fizzled out. You know, the, guy, the guy's got a lot on his plate, too. You know, there's a lot of fans. <laughs> right. Anyway, anyways. Um, so I told him about it, and he's like, oh, one. Uh, so he said, give me your flight details. I'm like, well, he's like, let me see what I can do. And then the next thing you know, the next morning, he's like, oh, I booked. I'm like, what? He's like, I'm on the same flight as you. We're going to UK. So awesome. we had to change. Me and Pete had already booked our BNBs and everything. And, uh, and then Nico jumped on board as well because I talked to Nico that I'm going to UK Stock Car Fest. So all of a sudden, like, me and Pete had already done all our bookings for, for like, BNBs and everything. We had to change everything because now there's four of us all together. That's going to be a, be a wild, blast. wild week. Yeah, that'll oh, be a man. blast. Are you going to wait? You gonna I can't wait to like see your shoulder. It. Oh, sorry. We have, uh, we're planning to do a confessional. So basically a room will be set up every night where <laughs> each one of us can go in and give our thoughts for the day. Oh, that's awesome. oh yeah, like uh, like the Big Brother TV show or something where you, yeah, exactly, <laughs> you like lock yourself exactly, in the room. Yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so that that's for sure something that we'll put together probably. Every every one of us gets like fifteen minutes to go off on a rant for yeah. the day, and then, yeah. Oh, that'll be so fun! I can't wait that'll to be see about cool. it. Uh, I'm taking like five cameras with me, so we'll see what we can do. Of course you are. Some, of course, I just just five. I'm, I'm disappointed. It's tough. I think that's one of the hardest things for me to pack. Like clothing and all that is easy, but when it comes to my gear, I'm like, I don't know what to take. Should I take this whole setup with me? <laughs> like, uh, you won't, dude. Enjoy, enjoy yourself. I mean, it was it was hard enough for me, even just with a cell phone. And look what you did with that one camera on Massimo's track. Okay, granted, you brought the the uh, the, the car cam, but look what you did with that that GoPro. I didn't think that footage was gonna come out. You were just like all up in there on the track and moving around. And I'm like, whoa, this guy can move. And he's like, and everything came in so super crisp, right? And if you had more practice on his track, I'm sure you would have even got even better, um, even better shots. So you're good, man. Like, you know, don't don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Yeah, you know. That's a common um, theme. Between, between you know, that. it's a, it's a, one thing about me is I like the, I'm a comf- creature of comfort. So when I have all my equipment, I'm very happy. When I don't, I get all antsy, and especially like, a week long without all my toys with me. It's like, up uh, to him. it's worse for me than not having oh. stock cars. Oh man, I'm sorry that I can't come with you. Then I'm sure it's going to be like difficult for you <laughs> not to wake up and have me around. Um, man, <laughs> let me let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do with Jen. I don't know if I'm allowed to take a week off to go to England, but uh, I don't know, yeah. man. Like I survived <laughs> a full year and something without you, so I think I'm I good. Yeah, <laughs> I think you can survive for a week. <laughs> yeah, don't now don't that you your, now that you know. Please me. don't beat yourself up about this. You know, <laughs> while you're sitting in Montreal, I'll be in England doing what you don't know how to do: keep a car on the track. Keep a car on the track. My track, my car, stay on my track for reasons because they're not bolted in the weirdest places. 
Okay, let, let you want to why keep a car on the track? Here we, the, Here we go again. Here we go again. The only person that can drive a car and crack a track at the same time. I've never seen that happen in my whole entire life. Dude, I actually, sorry <laughs> it's about like the that. most durable the stock car track person. they make. <laughs> I've never seen anyone drive a stock car and break a track until <laughs> I met you. So that's your claim to fame. Yeah. That and the uh, the old slot cards of the the family jewels. I mean, oh man, that was priceless. <laughs> that oh, was man. priceless. It couldn't have happened at even a better time because you were in mid sentence trying to say something nasty and got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fourteen karma, minute karma. There you go. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Jen one. says bye. You're good. Book the flight yeah. to UK. She says you're good. No, Jen. No. <laughs> Please, oh, bro, fuck. bro, I will, I will live in your, in your luggage. That's how I'm getting there. I'm gonna, you're gonna bring an extra pack of luggage, and I, and I'll live in that luggage. I don't care. Yeah, MB, you're correct. Rest in peace. Track is correct. That's what we should put on a shirt for you. Next time you come down, I'm gonna put rest in peace. Track on a shirt for you. With some, with some. Oh, we didn't even get to see walnuts. the print shop, did you? Oh, we did, we did. Yeah, we did, bro. bro. That dude, you like. I can't remember. It's a blur. There was that whole so weekend. much. There was so much. Even, even you know, looking back, and I rewatched our, our um, uh, like the recap video and 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 whatnot, like the final thoughts. And there's just a list of things that like we didn't do. We didn't go over your paints. We didn't. You didn't show me the uh, uh, your other hobby shop. You didn't show me like, dude. There's like, there's so much to do at Raul's, guys. Like this guy is in the hobby. Like I don't think your videos even portray or people understand that how involved okay great you got the collection in the back okay he's a collector but a be but a but you have history with all your cars there are video series that you can do with just a segment of a certain type of car and then you got your mini z's and then you got your gaming and your painting this is like you know the most interesting man in the world okay like let's let's you know i'll say what i have wow. to say but wow. like it's it's one of those, right? Wait a second. But, no, but, no, I'm not Massimo. We're not, you know, you know who you're talking about, right? I'm talking about you. Yeah, I know. Like, can you can you just take a compliment? And the man who cannot it's take getting a starry eyed on you now, Raul. Watch out. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy jumps around like. And a I love I love the way he sleeps. Door. He's so calm. He's got a nice breathing thing. You know, a nice breathing <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> Oh, you were watching me. Oh, oh I got my phone. Okay, right. I'm ringing the bell <laughs> now. So that's just because it's getting weird. Let's see what the chat has to say about Raul this. loves me because I have stuff that no one, I know that nobody has. And and look look what I got, man. Look what I got. Whoa. I got stickers, bro. You can Even put them up here. Stickers. I need to see them. Or put them. Yeah, look at I'm that. Sorry. Not you only that, you got something that no one else has. I know, it's behind no me. You see it? No, nobody can see it. It's so far away. No one else has this. No oh. one else outside of one of the Conquest team members. Oh, have. look at that. Why aren't you wearing that? I'm not allowed. He's not allowed to. I'm not allowed to oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Raul, take me under your wing. Let's let's start it. Let's start a Conquest racing chapter in Montreal and get this thing started and get your vibe of things. He's like, no. No, no. I'm like, come on, can I, can I have a hat? Do you think I get a hat? No, no. Do you know, explain, explain the colors. Explain the colors. You have a system. Oh yeah. So the colors are, uh, yeah. So this hat system, this uh, Conquest Ray Gaming Club was set up for a very long time ago. In fact, in around 2011, I used to run the biggest tournaments in Toronto, uh, war gaming tournaments. So, and uh, that's when Conquest was formed. And um, members of Conquest actually have different colored hats. And the colors represent different levels of gaming. So Whoa. if they've won tournaments, they got a different color. If you see, so the, the hats actually mean a lot. That's the pretty symbol cool. means a lot to us. Like it's anyone who belongs to Conquest, the symbol means a, you gotta earn a, it. a lot. Right. Yeah. And, and oh, by the way, this symbol doesn't only translate only in my gaming club. But I have a Conquest Home Services business. I have a Conquest Studio. I have a Conquest, like Conquest the Dragon that just appears in lots of places. Um, eventually, I want to have my own building with the dragon on it. So that's, that's the whole thing, right? So um, people, a lot of people have asked for 
for merch, but I don't sell merch. Uh, I'm going to UK Slotcar Fest and I'm b- built a shirt specifically just for UK Slotcar Fest with the Conquest emblems on it. But it's only for the UK, only for the people that I um, I'm taking gifts for in the UK. So oh, cool. it, it, like it's yeah. So I I can't I I could sell the merch, but I don't do it because I just feel like it means something. It does, yeah. That's super cool. That it's like you earned yeah. it. Yeah, I totally get that. That's that's oh, really this, cool. He's he's allowed to have the hat, but he cannot wear it because <laughs> he didn't earn the hat. <laughs> Look, don't touch. Look, exactly. don't touch, Joe. He I said, "No, I want it for my collection." It. I was like, "You can have it in the back, but you can't wear it." So I don't know if. He... <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect him to hold on to it, but uh, you know, Raul, Raul is full of surprises, right? Like it was just like I'm busting his ball, uh, his his, his chops me, <laughs> all, all weekend, and and then he's just like at one point, you know, he just turns around, he's like, "Here," I'm like, "Oh, you want me to hold your hat? Great, I mean, I'm your hat boy." He's like, "No, it's for you," and I'm like, uh, "What? <laughs> I, I mean, what? Uh, thank you, sir." <laughs> like, he's like, "But you can't wear it. You didn't earn it. But here." So it's like these little moments of like, yeah, you're you're a good kid, but like just you know respect. <laughs> yeah, it's only because you have a hat collection. Wear. I do have a collection. Well, you saw uh, Joe got to see my hat collection. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. I We're all hatties. Bunch, bunch of hatties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have this obsession yeah. with collecting stuff. It's just like a hey, mine, 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 right? Yeah, Joe got to see a lot of my collections. <laughs> I don't just collect slot cards. I collect a lot of things. So yeah. uh, when you come to my house, it's like a little bit. Uh, my, my friends call my house like the hobby house because there's nothing that's of value to anyone outside of myself because it's all hobby related. So <laughs> if you like sneakers, I have over 300 pairs of sneakers. Of course if you like watches, I have watches galore. Oh, if you drawer. like, if you like Lego... I got Lego galore. I feel like board games. I, you know, I collect so many different things. It's yeah. just a hobby house, right? So when you walk into my rooms, it's just every room has this like dedication to something. Um, <laughs> well, so. that, well, that's it. In my video, I had to cut stuff out because I'm like, I can't just if I put everything, then the video's gonna be like three hours long. Just, yeah. yeah, and I had so to put anyway, space for my small. You got to, you got <laughs> to step into my world for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! Uh, so what? DM has a good one here, Joe. If you get a tattoo of the dragon on your body, you can wear the hat. That's more dedication than any of us have. <laughs> well, I actually have a a dragon tattoo. No, no, you got to have the conquest hat. I this dragon. I don't want to show you because now this dragon tattoo looks more like Big Bird. But whatever, uh, let's uh... <laughs> put it in a bad spot. All right. No, no, no. We're not talking about. Yeah, I just said it matches the hat. No, it doesn't match the hat. Oh man. <laughs> what? Um, so that arrow. I was so happy you drove it last night on your live, um, because <clears throat> of the. the, it was one of the oh, yeah, the black the, arrow. Yeah, the black arrow. Um, what do you, you? You ran in a bit. And you were having a little, a little difficulty. What? What do you think is? is I think the tires gonna... gone on it. So the I tires, have to yeah. the tires. So when you find these these uh, obscure uh, cars. Like, are you are you are you like scouring the internet, or are you just like uh, happen, no. happen to pop into shops? Like, how do these cars come about? Like, there's, like so I, I went to a basement. Uh, I was racing in a basement league, and one of the guys wanted to exit the hobby, and uh, that's why I picked up uh, the Black Edition BR- BRM mm-hmm. and uh, the Challenger that you guys saw me run last night. Yeah, uh, the. A couple, the Lamborghini Huracan, the limited edition Black Series. Yeah. Which, by the way, when I bought it, Massimo dropped it right after I bought it and shattered the <laughs> chassis. <laughs> oh. So that has to be replaced. Um, and then uh, we have, yeah, so I bought a bunch of cars from him um, that that I knew were kind of like rare. Yeah. Uh, and I knew they would be, you know, for me, they were it was something that I needed in my collection. So yeah, you just got lucky. It's not like I I'm not not very uh, up on like looking for deals and stuff. Um I just take whatever comes. So sometimes I go to Ernie's and some <laughs> it's so weird. Some people walk up to me and say, hey, 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 you want some cars? 
It's so weird. <laughs> Open up the trench coat. Like, my cars. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's like it, it's exactly that thing. It's like hey, 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 because you know they don't want to, they don't want to step on Ernie's toes. I understand that. Yeah. So yeah, they'll come up to me like, hey, 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 you want some cars? I'm like. Uh, let's see what you got, and then he they'll go over and they'll open up a uh, open up a case, and there's like a whole bunch of cars on top, and uh, and they'll give me a price, and I'll be like, okay, and done, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm just like that, like you know, if I think the cars are cool and they're something I'm not seeing, yeah, the universe um, comes to you. Yeah. The universe comes to you. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's how I pick up some of these cars in my collection, and then Ernie helps me out because. Like I said, I've been trying to pick up all the Porsches through the eras. Like, yeah, uh, yeah you saw what I've been doing. So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, Ernie finds cars for me, uh, you know, and like some beautiful cars that are obscure that I've never, I never thought I would ever own. Yeah, uh, I've been lucky to get. So we we almost got him on camera. He was like this close, and then he's like, oh, "It's Saturday. I'm kind of busy." And but he was like, uh, "Come Tuesday. Come Tuesday." I'm like, "I can't." And even when I went upstairs to say bye to him, he was like, come Tuesday. I'm like, ah, my marriage, I can't. <laughs> I can't just keep, I can't just stay like an extra two days. So, uh, no, great guy. Great guy, honestly. And uh, thank you for introducing me to him. And, and that, that whole weekend, for sure, was, uh, was, such, a, was such an experience. And uh, again, the, for those of you, especially like I can see Mark's in the chat. A uh, uh, great thanks to the community for, you know, joining in on the banter and keeping up with it and whatnot. I, that's what I enjoy. About this community that we can connect with each other it's not just because you know you know uh pete and i we have a live stream or the guys are doing uh, youtube channels it doesn't mean that we can't interact and have fun and become our own group of guys this is what i love the most about the hobby even if i never put out another video just you know just the interaction i think is great and uh and whatnot and i know raul deep down he loves me i know <laughs> I feel like... you do realize that i knew pete first yeah, that's all I'm not, uh, the competition you do now. realize that, yeah, exactly. And you do realize that Pete and I had conversations before we even knew you. I'm not saying, <clears throat> I'm not trying to. And I didn't invite mm-hmm. myself over to your house, Rule. I'm just saying. <laughs> you should. You should. I think Toronto's the halfway mark it between was, here and It Missouri. was hilarious, you know. It was hilarious because I had a feeling he was out. He was So I, I went and opened my door, and, and he hadn't even come up. And I looked down the street, and there's this guy walking with all his stuff. I was like, that's Joe. And I started to laugh. And, and Gabe was like, what are you doing out there? I was like, yeah, he's coming. <laughs> Here it comes. You felt me, man. I'm telling you, you feel the universe. You felt my energy coming in. And I had my, my board game bag, my, my laptop backpack, my, my overnight bag, plus another, another like wine bag. And I'm like, let's get, the, let's get there. That was so awesome. Liam wants to know the difference between analog and digital. Oh, okay. Go for it. Yeah. Me? <laughs> I, got you, I got you. I got you. Um, in analog, right? So classic slot cars have two lanes on a track. On analog, it's one car on the left lane, one car on the right lane, or left, right, either way. Um, and when you pull that trigger, it goes on its lane. On digital, you can change from the left lane to the right lane. But that also means since you can change lanes, you can have more than two cars on the track at a time. Some systems, like we were talking about oxygen, can go up to 20. Uh, but most, so Carrera goes six, and Scalectric does six, two, or four? Six yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah so you can well. have six going at the same time on two, just two lanes, um, which is why the three of us in this chat are digital fanboys. Like, we love it because of that. It just feels more like racing when you're still on rails. It's it's a lot of fun. Now, I've got a sweet spot for my old HO track, which was um, which was analog, just because it's, it's a different feel, it's a different fun kind of racing. But every time I go up there, I have a blast. I'm like, oh, I kind of miss this. And then I come back to my digital. I'm like, yeah, I don't miss it that much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just, yeah, they're slightly different. But, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, Richard put it in pretty simple. Two cars is... Two cars on a track versus eight, and that's two lanes. And obviously, to get eight cars on analog, you would need eight individual lanes. Um, there you go. And Liam will be getting his first slot car track, uh, Carrera Go system, uh, because of Raul, who donated a track to Liam. 
so he could get into the hobby. So again, Mr. A humanitarian himself, making getting young kids addicted as soon as possible. Uh, so I want to thank you on behalf of Liam for that. I know we're, we, we have a, a video planned. Um, so Raul, I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, him and, and uh, Marie-José, his mom and Sean, his dad, uh, thank you very much for that. Absolutely. And uh, Liam will be our, uh, uh, we'll see. I want, I want to kind of, um, you know, depending on what his parents will allow, I want to um, uh, document that journey as well, getting uh, getting him into the into the hobby, starting him off with Carrera Go, and let's see what we can do. Guys, Raul's great, great guy. Great, great guy. Eric, I see you. Wild man. I want to show you something, buddy. I was hoping you'd pop in. I got myself upgraded from this screwdriver to this screwdriver set. Ooh. I got me a professional screwdriver set. Again, because Raul told me to. <laughs> so you can at least look the part, right? Well, that's it. Well, no, because now these new stock cars <laughs> that I got, I need these things. So Eric I was thinking about you. I don't think I can ever lose my screwdrivers again because they come in this nice case. I, I know screwdrivers. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, come, welcome to the club, Joe. You know, good job for you. But it's my first set, so I'm proud. So I thought of Eric at that point. Welcome to being an time. adult, Joe. Buying yeah. screwdrivers and getting excited about it. <laughs> oh, look at these things. They're so light. <laughs> One weekend in Toronto, he's grown up to become a man. Oh, oh yeah. That's all it took. You're welcome, are, are Jen. We men? Are, we, are we men or are we just like kids who just don't want to grow up? I don't up know what you're like... talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you were just Italian a moment ago. Oh. Yeah? What, is that, what does that mean? Now you're a man. Oh, no, no. man. I was Italian. Ooh, now. Oh, okay. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Go to your corners. Oh, <laughs> Mark, real quick, Mark Mark mentioned we want to talk about costs and shipping and non-shipping digital yeah, cars. Yeah, let's talk absolutely... about that. Mark says you got to talk about cost and shipping non-digital cars. Now, so that is... Uh, go ahead. You know, you, you tell me what your thoughts are about that. My thoughts are that's a whole video in and of itself, but um, obviously analog cars right off the bat are typically less expensive than their digital counterparts. And in order to make an analog car, when you want it to work on digital, there's a chip you have to buy to add it to it, unless you buy digital right off the bat. Um, so there, there is more to it, obviously. Um, and I've chipped a car and like done it the, you know, the, the not plug and play way. And it's not, it's not easy, but it's not at all, you know, beyond what, if you can open up a car and, you know, lube the, the axle, you can pro and you got a solder sometimes. Um, but nine times out of 10, you could probably figure out how to do it. And there's a million and a half videos better than the one I did about how to do it. Um, but yeah, there, there's certainly, way more to it in that, than that but uh it's it, there's separate styles of cars that that are analog or digital mm -hmm. yeah and, i think majority of the modern cars now come digital ready um you know most of the brands most of the brands that are releasing cars today are are breading their cars for digital right so whether it's slotted whether it's polycar nsr um even Pioneer, all these brands do ready their cars ready for digital. Uh, and then depending on what chipset you want to put, depending on the brand, they have their own chipsets that are ready for the different um, systems. Like uh, So uh, one thing I want to do this year is because I love analog cars, but I think I think we've discussed this is about bring analog to digital. So buying a set of four analog cars, chipping them all up and having digital races with them, because I think that's more fun. I still want to drive analog cars, but one thing that we know is about analog cars is that normally they're flimsier than Carrera cars. So putting a digitally <laughs> chipped analog car on a Carrera track with another Carrera car is like murder to that analog car. Uh, because yeah. if, that, if that Carrera car touches it, it explodes. Um, as my Maserati from Slotted is well, <laughs> as well documented. Um, so it's good to race like for like, uh, and uh, that's something that I will be doing a lot more of uh, throughout the rest of the year. And that's a big thing about UK Fest for me as well. It's picking up 
sets of cars that will compete against each other and be digital ready. And there's yeah. a bunch over there that you'll be able to see and purchase and buy that you can't get over here in North America, right? Yeah. 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 There's That'd lots cool. of deals as well, right? So because oh, a lot like of people deals. have older cars that maybe they don't want anymore and you can pick up a good set of cars. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that part of it. I really like swap meets like that where you just walk too. around and you see all the cars you pick them up and you're like, ah, you know what? I can own this car if I, you know, really want it. And and some of them are really, really cheap. I don't know. I watched a lot of like Slaughter and um, Rob from Swiss Plots from last year, and they picked up some great looking cars for really like a couple of pounds. So which is nothing, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it should be really interesting. So what Raul is saying is that if you guys have any requests or anything you wanted to pick up, just send them an email. <laughs> You'll bring an extra bag. You know, just pay that extra cost, and he'll get whatever you guys need. Right? His email address is joe at arrerascareras.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Send it to Joe. Oh, send it to me and I'll send all your crust through Joe and, and he'll manage it for it. <laughs> but and if, you, if you don't get it, it, it's Joe's fault. <laughs> well, I don't know. I had, I had this like this light bulb go on when when I was watching the your, your live stream with with uh, with Pete with um, Maurizio Ferrari and it clicked again. Oh, He's 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 slot it slot dot it it just it all like the light bulb you know when I started in, in here I, people were like oh this is Italian this is this this is that and it just what the hell is he talking about it's called it's, slot it Joe not slot dot it slot it no slot it that's what it's called <laughs> yeah the dot it is for Italian Italy no don't scratch your head I don't know that's probably what? yeah. Because when you when you want to go on an Italian it's website, it's called slotted polycar. That's it. Okay, so that's how we call it, slotted polycar. Okay, I slot. There's a period, it, <laughs> slotted. Let's let's continue. Like let's continue. So let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move Maurizio on. I don't Ferrari. think anybody's gonna win this argument. <laughs> <laughs> slotted divided by Maurizio, made by a Maurizio Ferrari. Wouldn't it be cool to have a Ferrari that he designed signed by Maurizio Ferrari? This is what I would like to, ha to have. Just yeah, you, got, you, you gotta just, go. If you know they do UK have limited edition slotted models. Well, I, do whatever you pick up. I'll be whatever you can pick up and get signed by Ferrari. I would appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> just put what? it on your list. Just put <laughs> it on your Why list. Why are you asking me? You got MP <laughs> going. Who's the, the biggest Ferrari nerd? Why yeah. would yeah. I? Yeah. Why would I burden stuff? MP? That's unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't do that to MP. I mean, in the morning, you're going to give him his time. He's got to get his hair ready. He's got to write, you know, the right appropriate dress. Let's come on. Got to give him time to get ready. <laughs> uh, uh, Raul's doing what, what well, I mean, he, Raul is our moderator, so he's doing his job. He's actually looking yeah, at the chat. pretty good doing. reading the comments. Richard says chipping is a cost, but the real cost is a 3D printer, the airbrushing equipment, and the building of the kits. Uh, it's totally agreed. <laughs> like my, my 3D printer and everything that it has, like it, the rabbit hole that has taken me down has, uh, yeah, has, has taken way more money out of my wallet than the slot cars has, to be, to be completely honest. But, uh, but yeah, it's all all part of you know a uh, hobby within a hobby. Um, I have an airbrush kit, but I'm no good at it, so I don't use it very much. Um, oh, I can't even start airbrushing. I don't even know. So Raul's easy. good at airbrushing. So easy. You know, when like, you come down, well, Pete will come down soon. Yeah. When he comes down, I'll take him to my print phone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. All our 3D printers. <laughs> I want to ask you about that. Do you like? Do you print? stuff for yourself on there at all or is it like is it strictly Just like wargaming stuff i did okay. when i first started i used to build i printed a lot of 3d wargaming terrain and now we sell it on droves so really that's our, so cool our printers are just constantly busy with that stuff or with anime kind of like um little knickknacks like things that we sell at little shows like my friends still go my friend's illustrator and he still goes to all the uh, fan expos and all that so we sell yeah, we cool. print we print all these little little things and we sell them at the shows and stuff 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. How many printers are in the farm? Uh, it yeah. changes because we have about eight FM printers and four resin printers, but they're oh. huge. That the, the big ones. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, and then, uh, like, I don't know, uh, there was a live stream I did with Adrian. Adrian runs a print farm. I don't run a print farm at all. I, I, I used to, when I first started, I got into FM printing in the beginning. I was the first one to get the 3D printer. And then Adrian took over, and now he runs um, he runs the print farms. Um, and we print everything from Titans to everything else. Like, um, That's so cool. And uh, he mixes his own resins, too, so... Because there's an art to mixing resins, right? Because sure. sometimes when you do resin prints, you want something that's a little bit more rubbery or you want something that's a little bit, yeah, and he knows how to mix the resins and get that consistency. So he's got the down pack and curing those kind of resins, how to cure them properly, what kind of structures you need internally so they don't explode on you. Uh, so they can cure cure properly on the inside because a lot of people cure them on the outside and then later they just melt or they break apart because the inside didn't cure properly. Yeah. So a lot of those things got to got to be handled. Um, but I showed Joe like a little bit of the samples of stuff that we print out of our printer all the time. Yeah, I didn't I didn't believe it wasn't resin. I thought it was resin. He's like, I printed this. I'm like, you, this is resin. He's like, no, it's it's 3D print. And I was just thinking about that. Can you guys get close to uh, like vinyl, like the Funko yeah. Pop stuff. Uh, like... We can do, we can do rubber. You can do lots of different materials out of the printers, um, especially like... when you go. Like well, I got stuff. into three D printing a long, long time before it became mainstream because I used to be in automotive and we should develop spoilers for like the Hyundai Elantras and all these uh, commercial cars. And what we used to do was we used to uh, scan the bodies of the cars because the cars would come in, they were brand new. We used to scan them with 3D scanners and then develop the spoilers and then print them out of these systems. We had these huge 3D printers. Um, we print them out and we test fit them on. And then when they were ready, we'd ship them to China to get the tooling made. Oh, uh, that's, that's, cool. how to, that's how we used to do the spoilers and stuff. Um, and then those printers could actually do multi-material. So you could actually print a full planetary gear system with rubber gearing and everything all in one and just print it out in one shot. Or you could print a shoe. I printed a rubber shoe out with a rubber <laughs> sole and everything uh, fully uh, ready to go. Of course. You uh, do, yeah. So that's cool. Uh, that's, that's like back in the day. And that's a long, long time ago, over 10 years ago. Oh, uh, we're talking about when, yeah. when we, we never thought about it as, uh, as a residential or something you could do in your home. Yeah. Right. Well, that's yeah. It. I mean, I think for me, uh, 3D printing, I'm on, I had, I had a funny, I had a good conversation about with uh, Dave from Slaughter about this. Uh, we're on the same page, 3D printing until you can take it out of the box, plug it in, put your file and press start. Uh, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Like it's, it's such a hobby within itself to set everything up. You got to build it. And I understand why. But until that day comes where you can just take it out of the box, put it on, plug it in, go warm up, and you know that that's that's what I'm. I can't. It's, They're you know. pretty dang close to that, man. They yeah. are pretty no. dang close. This bamboo lab I have is like. I mean, you can always tweak it, right? There's always yeah. things that can be done. You got to maintain it. You got to clean it and and do that sort of thing. But this one, the amount like the old printer I had an Ender 3, I would have failures maybe like one mm -hmm. out of every like six or seven <clears throat> times, you know, just because whatever, the heat got too hot or, or whatever, it was, it, level wasn't right. This thing does like all of the stuff you have to do adjustments on its own, ready to go. Um, and okay. I don't, I have maybe like one failure and this thing has gone like <clears throat> hundreds of hours. That's These things good, are man. so good now. They level out themselves. They yeah, level the pads. They do everything. It's like Before, cheap. you had to like manually do the leveling. You had to yeah. be like, oh, this is my tool. Oh, it's level. Yeah. Oh, this side. Oh, it's level. Oh, no, I got to adjust this screw. I got to bring it up. Yeah. I, I remember They're my like... first FM printer. It was like nuts. And then the nozzle would jam up. You'd oh, be like yeah. 16 hours in. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, no, this is over. <laughs> or, oh, yes, no. yeah, 16 hours in, and then it knocks it off the build plate, and the whole thing is just like a pile of spaghetti. You're like, well, yeah. guess we'll just start so, over. Um, yeah. It's also, this one is wicked fast, which is why I love it the most, because 
it's so fast that like it's rapid prototyping, right? So I'm building my my pit garage, and it's like, and I was telling telling Joe earlier today that you know I'm I'm building this little box to house house the electronics for the thing, and you know I design it in my in my 3D design software, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty close. I print it. 45 minutes later, I have it in my hands, and I'm like. Oh no, that was off by a millimeter. So I move it on my 3D design software and do it again instead of like, now what fraction of a millimeter is that distance between those two? It's like, nah, let's just print it and then check and then print, print it again, it again and, yeah. and go and go and go. And it's it's yeah, I've I've been loving yeah. it. I never would have been able to to get this project anywhere near as close to done as I am without without it being that fast. Because on my old Ender 3, a lot of these parts, like this one took what 45 minutes last night. Um and yeah, my old one, it would have taken like four hours. Um, and it, at that point, it's like, if it didn't work, you're like, oh, do I really want to spend another half of a day trying yeah. it again? Um, so it, it's 100%. Just, yeah. Let's, uh, I want to, I want to go back to the analog digital thing um, for chipping, because I was, I was asked that question. And I think f for me, um, and I don't know if anyone out there is, is the same way, either you guys are like full analog or full digital. Um, Raul, I think it's really cool that you're going to chip your analog cars in, in, in a quad. I think there's something there that we can maybe like challenge the community to do, even just with getting uh, four Carrera cars as fast as they can go. Uh, that, that That's a video in that um, in itself. But the whole reason why I got the, well, that I got off you and I wanted a, a converter kit is to not have to deal with chipping, right? Like I think the only chips that I would I really would want to chip our Carrera like like now I, I can buy Carrera analog cars and if I really like them I can chip those cars to be digital like the cars like because going to Panther Hobbies they had this whole section of car like oh I haven't seen this model and this model it's like oh it's all evolution and at the time I didn't I wasn't thinking of it but now going back it's like well now I can buy evolution cars and not worry about it because those are Carrera cars and I just have to buy the chip and but the, you don't even need to buy the chip the way I do it is and this is if you really want to save money, right? You got to think about this, right? You always the most you need is four chips. Let's just say six at most. So if you really wanted to save money, you could just buy six digital cars and pop the chips out because just one screw would take them out. And you could buy all evolution and then every time you want to run, just switch the chip out. It's so easy, it's plug and play. Same as nice. electric same as Pioneer, same as Slot It, because everything's plug and play. So really, when you look at it, you can say, okay, I want to chip Slot It cars. I'm going to buy the SP43 chip. I'll buy six of them. That's my investment in digital. And then I can buy all the analog cars in Slot It I want and just switch to put the chip in and use BlueTac just like Slot R does. Tack it in, plug it in. You got a digital car. Same thing with the DPR doors for Pioneer and Skelectric. You buy six of the cars and chips. Any any Skelectric car you want digital takes you two minutes. You didn't think to tell me this before? I never thought of that. <laughs> you didn't think to but that's what I'm trying to say. It's like everyone says that, oh, you need to chip every car. Why do you need to chip every car? The chips are simple plug and play. Unless you're using a slot technic chip. And now the reason you use a slot technic chip is when you get into a very a car that doesn't have space for the digital chip. That's when you have to get creative, and that's when you need like these advanced chips, as I would call them. Let's just call them. They're not advanced; they're just different chips. But a slot technic chip is now the one that you solder in, because you you your LED is now independent of the chip itself, and you can move it around. You put it where, and you that want. allows yeah. you to that place the chip so, in a different place. So that makes sense then, because then if I want to, that you know, I'll buy two, three chips, and then. But again, for me, the only way it's going to make sense is that like when I buy an analog car, I'm not interested in running it with, you know, like you said, with the Carrera cars, it's just not going to happen. Those, those are going to be, you know, I think I'm going to go into the rally um, just because, you know, time trials. And for me, if I want to time trial a car, it makes more sense for rally. Cause that's, that's my second um, love of racing. I used to watch rally a lot. So getting the cars to run and having a time trial, you know, working it myself, that's where the switch comes in. So I don't have to worry about, I just have to worry about making sure that I can tune the car without worrying about the digital chip, adding any extra weight and then go and then just make that switch and then be done with it. If there are cars that I'm like, Oh yeah, maybe I do want to race these cars. And because I mean, it's just me, Jen, 
the kids, I don't have a club. I don't have friends who are coming over every other weekend to race. So there's no point of just saying like, oh, I have to be ready in case someone decides to get into this hobby. It's just it's just me and, and a few people. So that that switch that I like. So now I can go and see, like, oh, I really like this car. I'm going to buy it. Oh, I like this rally car. Perfect. I buy it. I don't have to worry about the chip. I already got the, the tech slot, which yeah. I have to still try. I haven't installed it yet. But the chipping part of it, I thought about it and I'm like, well, the cars that I would want to chip would be the evolution from Carrera, which is because I just find that there's more selection. And and I guess it makes sense what you're saying. Just buy a maximum six and then swap them out as you go. And especially Carrera, because it is plug and play. So that's uh, so thank yeah, you for that. That's exactly what I you know, I don't get my I don't get hung up about buying an evolution car. If I see an evolution car, it's always a great price. And I'll, I'm always like, hey, if I ever want to run this as digital, it's so simple. I'll just take out a, another chip, put it in, that's, and I'm good to go. That's a really right. good, a really good point. Because it's like I pass up on, there's a couple of shops that I've been to, both when I was in Milwaukee and around here, that, that have some Evolution cars. I'm like, oh, man, I wish that one had the blue box so I could run it on my track. And it's like, why are you so dumb? Like, you have two or three cars that never go around your track anyway. Just pull the chips out of those ones and put it in that one. Like... What's wrong with you? Yeah, so what I used to do in the beginning, because I mass chips, a mass chips is I used to go to Panther and buy previously owned digital cars. So they're really cheap because they're previously owned. And all I'll do is take them and remove the chips. And now I have a whole bunch of chips. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, because I don't really need that car. And I used to buy like multiple liveries. It would be the same car, multiple liveries, and it would be like whatever, twenty dollars off or thirty dollars off. And I was like, oh no problem. Yeah, go. I buy five of these cars and then take them apart. And I have like Corvette bodies. I have a whole bunch of Corvette bodies that came off this kind of this 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 whole slew of cars I bought because I just wanted the chips. And I've had that since day one. So and and you know and that's a like I said, you don't have to make it overly complex. Uh, you can if you want to, but you're not. Yeah, because you're never gonna have more than like eight of them on the track at a time anyway. So you need eight chips. Uh, exactly you know, at max and you can get away with four but so D dan says uh he says by the time uh dan slot valley racing says by the time you chip five to six cards you've paid for the axle box and i totally understand that i totally get that but then they don't switch lanes and and yeah. that's the whole reason why i i like these slot cards it's a whole reason well, there's I so much to more no, but I, I, i'm not see that that and that, that's a great angle I, all three of us have a different approach to um the the analog side of things right and then uh for me it's just dipping my, my toes I, I have no interest in switching lanes with with a car that i won't race with other people there's no point so that it doesn't i'm gonna say it doesn't deserve digital it's and not that's the point. reason for the axle boxes and the reason for the tech slot boxes is yeah. that when you want to just run an analog car for what it is, you can switch it, you know, flick yeah. a switch and now you're analog, right? Yeah. Which Scollector does natively on its Arc Pro system. Which I know? think is so cool. Yeah. But Carrera does not. So you have to buy the axle box, which if you look at an axle box or you look at text lock box, is really what you are is chipping the lane. So if right. you open up those controllers, the chips are actually, you still have a digital chip chipping a lane. That's the only difference. And something that Maurizio taught, touched upon where he said the oxygen system can be used on an analog because you can chip a lane in analog using oxygen, right? You can actually add the chip to the, to the rail itself, not to a car. And now the lane is chipped, which is exactly what TechSlot Box does. And that's exactly what I think the Axle Box system does the same thing and all that. And I think what Carlos did is the same thing uh cyber so and he built his know, own yeah you can just chip a lane that's you know if you open up the tech slot system it's not overly complex at all um but yeah the to me what i want to have is i want to have four analog cars that can race digitally together that's my yeah. i'm completely yeah, opposite cool. i want to build racing series out of these analog cars so i look at it that way i want to get you know, force collector cars on track, like the BTCC cars, and have them bump and uh, into each other. I also like to video a lot, and having ghost cars running just adds to the flair of a video, just like Hughes was talking about. He runs his cars on ghost mode, you know, and you can get better cinematic footage that way, right? 
and that's what I want. I want cars switching lanes. I want to have that cinematic footage. When I and I can do that with a digital car. I cannot do that with analog unless I'm using rubber bands. And even then, it's just two cars running, and timing those correctly is always a problem. So from from a video perspective, for me, it's very exciting to digitally chip analog cars and let them to run on my track, so I can do video. So you can do the camera, and it's funny. Like I I don't I'm nowhere near your level of of cinematography. But when I when I did the video on on the the 911. I was like trying to race it and film it at the same time. And then I was like, why am I, why am I doing this? Just put it in ghost mode. And then I was like, oh, this is fantastic. I can move the camera yeah. around. It's going. Um, yeah. it's, it's funny. So I see uh, Shalafish. Um, uh, I assume I'm saying that right. It says Mark Twain and St. Charles is a pretty good selection of both digital and analog cars. Mark Twain and St. Charles, that's in my area. So Shalafish. Uh, holler if you're in St. Louis. That's pretty cool. Maybe we should meet up. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Mark Twain Hobbies is is here in St. Louis, but they're also known as uh, HobbyOne.com. So I don't know if you guys have seen their stuff, but uh, um, very cool. Um, maybe another St. Louis in, in, in the crowd. So not just Canadians yeah. here. Um, but uh, But, yeah, so we're at... 9.15 Central Time, 10.15 Your Time. So any sort of last thoughts to wrap it up? Uh, the only thing I have to say is it's, uh, at one point I saw that we had 22 concurrent viewers. That's a new record for us. So thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Absolutely. It's, it's growing and we appreciate uh, the, the diehard fans that, that come every week. Liam, you're always the first one in. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, but yeah, it's just, this is really fun, and I'm really excited that that Raul came and and had a a goofy chat with us, even if they did, you know. But well, I think we were the goofy ones. Rather. He was pretty serious, so that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't forget the Discord, guys. Please join the Discord. Uh, well, please, if you want, come chat with us. Come, come hang out. Uh, that video is on the way uh, to explain it for those of you who are uh, new to Discord. Um, but basically, come in click on a, a, a subject and we're all in there just chatting away and hit yourself in the lounge. We can talk. I was talking to Rush last night. It was really great. You know, he's a new member and uh, you know, it's, anytime we can get, get a chance to stop, talk slot cars with you guys or anybody is always a great, is always a great time. So, you know, uh, join if you want, but it's there for everybody. Yeah. That's well, it. I got anything. Any last questions for me before I head off into the sunset? Give it a second because you guys do that. I noticed. You ask a question, no one says anything, but you got to give it a, give it a second for us to see the because uh, yeah. it's delayed for them, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, easy. Joe. Any any new cars God. you guys got on the Please? on the horizon? I don't. I kind of. Watching your watching your live stream last night kind of killed my. Uh, yeah, I gotta my, do my review for this car. Oh, that looks sick. That's uh, that's what like, I gotta work on. Like this weekend, a lot of video <laughs> coming out. You want to see my bag of goodies though before we go? Oh yeah, you didn't show off all the stuff you got. You said yeah, you right, would. Let's show sign them. off on that. Oh. So, so the and who and who and who made these? Who made these? All those logos are designed by moi. <laughs> oh, nice. And, there, and there's one that's my favorite on here. Can you guys tell which one? <sighs> Everybody knows, Joe. Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody Jeez. knows. This is my first purchase. We'll do it quick, quick. You got to take oh. it out of the box. Dude. No, it's going to collect dust. Oh, <laughs> Got a shelf queen already. All right. Yeah, I got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just, it was dangerous because I love the Jägermeister livery. I don't know what it is. And every time I see Jägermeister livery and all these different cars, it's like, that's like, do I really want to collect cars just because it says Jägermeister on it? As me, the guy who hates advertising, but I love Jägermeister so much. I don't know. Very don't cool. Know. Well, I don't see anymore. Everybody's just kind of saying, saying go, 
heading off, going to work on cars, going to. Yeah. Oh, he's so doing paint correction on a Mopar. He's question, doing real work. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he's oh, like, what's the plan? What's the plan going forward, Raul? Hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things in the background that I'm thinking about, um, but it will come to light probably after UK Soccer Fest. So we'll figure it out after that. So we'll cool. probably have to do a follow up after that. Yes, we will. Awesome. Yeah. But oh, wait, wait, you didn't ask my, my question. Are you going to do a live? Or are you just, you're just going to, like when you're, when you're there, you're not going to do any lives or you're just going to do uh, the. Um... The, uh, There's the, the... four YouTubers in the house. There's definitely going to be live streams. A couple, two, three, I bet. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, it's okay. going to be nuts. Uh, I also bought, I, I told Pete, and I hope this is going to happen. I bought my own personal hotspot so I can actually put up the 3D, the 3D camera at the event. So you guys can actually roll, roll the camera around Whoa. as I'm walking around. So that way the, the, the 3D, the 360 camera will be always on as I walk around. You guys can just move the camera whichever way and scale in, scale out, whatever you guys want. So, so we can follow MP around. Cool. I appreciate that. Oh, my God. All right. On that <laughs> note, everybody have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Raul, again for joining us. Joe, and it's no been thank good. thank you, Jennifer. I will not take Joe with me to the UK. <laughs> no matter how much you beg him, I bet. It costs you more than it's yeah. worth, I bet. But, uh, yeah, we're back on the two-week cadence, so not next Saturday, but the Saturday after. We'll see you all then. Thanks again so much, everybody. Thanks, guys. You all have a great day. Much, much appreciated. And thank you, Raul, for coming on. No worries. Anytime. See you guys later.